Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Barton Power Sports, Sportsman's Warehouse, and Best Care Home Services. Hey, welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. As uh, Ron Wong does, uh, I can hear him over there. I hope that wasn't part, uh, wasn't part of something that was missing. But no. um, this, is, this is kind of an, I've never done this kind of show before, and I've always wanted to do it. It's kind of like our all-women show we did here recently. This is a all co host show because a lot of our folks out there don't realize what a great group of co-hosts that we have on Outdoors with Larry Ray. And any award that we've won over these um, 17 years are, are through the efforts of these guys that, that take time to come on and uh, and kind of keep me in straight, if that's possible. Uh, but... Uh, We've got Ron Wong and Gene Smith in studio. Stuart Settles is over there uh, pushing the buttons, and and I know we've heard from Ron. We've heard from Gene. We'll hear from, some more from them. But uh, third Saturday of the month, it's uh, this man comes in. He's got he definitely has the radio voice. You yes, know, you, I mean, yes, I mean, he, he he could do it from one of his four or five businesses, and uh, and it would sound just like. Uh, some of the uh, guys from the past, because he's got that deep radio voice, you know. But I don't know this morning. He's, he's got a nice yeah, radio voice. Yeah, but he's in the duck blind this morning, and, and that's my good friend, Frank Barton. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Larry. Good morning, everybody out there. See Wonderful that? day Yes, to, yeah. <laughs> to finish out the year. Finish out the year on this, uh, this uh, as we <clears throat> talked, is December the 30th, but Frank, uh, we've talked to both these guys, and they've kind of given us a little background on them from where they uh, grew up, uh, where they went to school, and 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 you know, and of course, Gene explained all the times that uh, he was at two hundred one Poplar, and we had to get him out of that <laughs> many times. But no, just kidding, just kidding. But uh, Frank, uh, tell us just a little background from yourself. Oh well, I uh, I grew up in Memphis, uh, and. Uh, kind of did the opposite thing as far as schools and stuff. I went away to high school and came home to college. Uh, sort of did the, the but, backwards. But you deal. went to, you went to Webb, right? I went to, went to Webb school in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. In and, Bell uh, Buckle, and Tennessee. Then, and, yes. And then went, and then came back home and went to, uh, Southwestern at Memphis now called Rhodes college. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I haven't, and, and, uh, I really haven't lived, uh, very many places. And not very far from where I grew up uh, in Midtown on Memphis, I'm probably, you know, when it's all said and done, I probably have been within about a 25 mile radius of oh. of where uh, where I've done. But uh, uh, it's a wonderful place around here, uh, especially if you love, you know, if you're a waterfowl hunter like I am, and yeah. with all the opportunities that we've got, and uh, um, I'm hoping uh, we did a little bit of scouting. Uh, this past week, and uh, as cold as it is, we have found some open water. And that's what you and, need, yeah. Uh, yeah. And we're going to be, uh, I'm thinking we're going to have a pretty nice hunt this morning in this open water. I don't know what it's going to be like next week. When yeah, it gets, you know, when the, that, when the high is only 20, I don't think we're going to have this open water No, I don't week, think but, you will. But uh, so Frank Barton, uh, <clears throat> we're talking to Frank Barton, our good friend. Uh, tell us how you got into the business. Uh, I know you used to have the Barton uh Ag Center out there on uh, Highway 64. Uh, your family, uh, how, how did that all come about? Well, my my family started the John Deere business uh, back in 1962. Uh-huh. And, um, uh, we ended up, uh, over the years, expanded to two locations and and uh, had an opportunity to, uh, uh, to sell the business. We mm-hmm. didn't really want to sell it, but somebody wanted to buy it. So if you're a seller... <laughs> That's always a good time. To That's sell. a good time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but I wasn't ready to stop uh, uh, doing uh, doing retail in the mid south. So we started Barton Power Sports uh, originally in West Memphis, and yeah. then uh, shortly thereafter I added Jonesboro. And in the last uh, in the last twelve months, we've opened up a location in Forest City, and then uh, the newest store is on Mount Moriah in Memphis. Uh, we call it. We, it's kind of dual branded with Barton Power Sports, Indian of Memphis. So we sell Indian motorcycles. So now, so, so when you were growing up, what did what did uh, I'm going to ask these two guys? What did you want to be? Come on. 
Oh, what did I want to be? Yeah, what did you I, want I, to be? I, Ron, I, I'm going to ask wanted, Ron. I can, I can remember exactly. I wanted to be a businessman. You did? Because that's what, that's what my dad was, and I wanted to be a businessman. I didn't have a clue what a businessman did, <laughs> but I knew, that's, I knew that's what my dad did, and I wanted to be like him. And you're our Frank Barton, the, how many, the second or the third? What are you? Well, I'm the third, but You're... back then, back then when somebody died, you all moved up a notch. So, oh, okay. uh, there's actually, there's actually a, uh, uh, you know, the Franklin Barton I would be like number four. And your son is, a, is... and then and, and then there's a son and then a the grandson. So, wow. So the the and the Barton family, uh, the, the, did this. Uh... So when you, you were when you were at Webb, you kept telling me, "What are you going to be?" I think I'm going to be a businessman. You know, I mean, uh, Bell Buckle is not the most. Uh, That's the home of the Moon Pie and RC Festival. You know, uh, you got it. You got <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't do that back when I was there. But, oh, uh, oh! You didn't have a t- uh, teacher named Cannon, did you? Did you ever have a Miss Mrs. Cannon talk there? Do you remember that? Don't re- don't okay. recall. Okay. Well, that was Phil Cannon's mom, the the guy. Uh, she taught at Bell Buckle, uh, I remember, for many years, and the late Phil Cannon's mom. But uh, and, I, and I know the, the waterfowl thing. Uh, tell, tell the listeners how you got into that, because really, you didn't. You, you told me that maybe you didn't. You, you weren't hunting when, when you were three years old or anything like that. No, so, I, I, my family grew up. Uh, we were dove hunters. Yeah. Uh, you know, nice warm September days and, and uh, dove hunting and never. Uh, didn't uh, actually start duck hunting until I came over and started working in this business, the John Deere business in, in Marion, and then had opportunities of going duck hunting with uh, friends and customers. Uh, so I started, um, I did that really on my own, not with any family members. And right. Like, yeah. I, like we talked earlier, my first my first real recollection of, of duck hunting was with uh uh, Sterling Briggs and Henry Reynolds down there at Lansing Bottoms, not uh-huh. very far from, you know, where we where, where were I we hunt. Hunt. Yeah, but, mm-hmm. right. But but today we're down at Bruins, a farm so, that we that I uh, uh, that I own with some other people, and uh, we got wonderful duck hunting down here. It looks like we're going to have a good morning um, this morning as well. Well, uh, I'm with, wa- this open, I- with this open water. Well, Frank, I plan sometime next week. If uh, I ain't I ain't breaking ice, but. Uh, Frank is my uh, my cupbearer here. He he uh, he helps me get into the stand, and he carries all my stuff. But he rides around in a moon machine. I think that uh, he's that, got some that, he's got that, some wonderful uh, toys. Uh, yeah, he does. And, and we wonderful were, that toys. Polaris. What was? Uh, what well, we, we're on the, we're in the Track Ranger today. The Track that's Ranger. The that's it, that's folks. The only, that's the only way we could have gotten back here. Yeah, to but, go where we're going. And really, folks, you'll say, "Well, what does that machine do?" Well, it really has. Like a half track or something like that. Uh, it, it, we were just s- sailing along through there in about uh, wasn't very deep, but uh, it, it can get you anywhere you go. And Frank does have a lot of toys. That's well. It's when you when you go. Your inventory is amazing. Folks, Your inventory. You know, I, I tell folks, I, you know, one of the things that I like about tracks is. I go where I go with confidence, and I go where people don't normally go. So I get an opportunity there you to go. places <laughs> yep. that you don't, you know, that you don't get to go to. And, yeah. and it's all about, you know, it's all about location, location, right. location when it comes to duck hunting. And it's field testing. You got to be able to tell well, that's right. the people what it's all about and that's what it really can exactly do. Exactly right. Yeah, you really can't drive that uh, and, that Polaris <clears throat> track. Whatever. What'd you call it again? The what were we in the Polaris? Uh, Track Ranger. The Track Ranger. You track, can't drive track. that around the parking lot, really, and, you know, do wheelies. Well, you can. It, it just kind of shakes you a little bit. But <laughs> it it's, sh- got its, lim- it's got its limitations. The other day I turned around Uh-oh. two different pla- I turned around two different places because I knew the water was going to be deeper than what the machine was capable of, of doing. So you got to, you know, you got to understand the limitations of things. So, so, how, de- how, deep so will- you don't have to walk out. Yeah, how deep does that uh, take you? How, and you use that thing. I, I can go... Uh, I'm, I'm about six foot tall, and, and I can go in um, high thigh water. Wow! wow. <laughs> high, high thigh. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Wow. Well, fr- well, Frank, we appreciate you. Happy New Year. Uh, look forward to uh, continuing our, our 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 
times on the radio with you. Thank you for being a show sponsor for Outdoors with Larry Race this so many years. And I just thought it was interesting that uh, everybody, you have to start someplace. And, you know, my dad wanted me to follow him as a Kaiser Frazier dealer. And, you know, there's not too many people know what a Kaiser Frazier is. <laughs> Uh, my dad was the first in Arkansas to. Uh, he, really? He had the Kaiser Frazier dealership. Yeah, we don't have time to go into my career, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. But this is a guy, and I'll say this, and I know Ron and Gene will vouch for this. Um, he was at, at the. Uh, we were going to try to get Ernie on this morning to come in when you were talking, but he's on the road to Louisiana to say how much he, he you meant to the Arca Butler Physically Challenged Deer Hunt, and I know that's something that's really close to your heart, isn't it? You know, I have followed that I have followed that hunt ever since it first started. Uh-huh. Um, followed it when you were writing for it or writing about it in the commercial appeal, and I always thought it was something that was just truly unique and special, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a real privilege for me to be able to help out. Well, when, there's a, there's a picture that we've posted on uh, lroutdoors.com. A, a smiling Frank. It must have been uh, 5:30 in the morning or something, and he's in one of his machines, and he's getting ready to take these guys out to deer hunt. And, and that's an and amazing. And he drove back and forth from his home every morning and was there all day. Uh, I appreciate you, buddy. Right. Thank <laughs> I mean, you very much, Larry, and. Uh, uh, happy New Year to everybody. I hope you get some good field reports for the rest of the morning. And we're about, uh, right now, we're about five minutes, seven minutes away from shooting time here. So okay, buddy. I now, got the, these youngsters have got the decoys out, and I'm just kind of sitting in the blind enjoying my conversation with you. Okay, buddy. I'll try to get with you to talk to you next week, okay? Sounds good. Happy New Year. Happy right. New Year, hey, everybody. Okay. Frank Barton and uh, really uh, – Wonderful man, yeah. and for what yes, everything he, he does. Uh, yeah, and he doesn't take any credit for uh, for anything. No, like he that. doesn't care anything about that. No, he's uh, and you know he's quite a historian too. You oh, know? oh yeah. we could have got into that. Oh, yeah. about, you know we we don't even talk about that. But now that's Frank a, is a historian. Sultana, he knows the Sultan of the whole story oh, and yeah, everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, go to go to their face page, and you'll be able to get a lot of that. All right, let's take a break, Stuart. Okay. And we'll roll right back. Uh, coming up next on our show is the one and only Bill Cooksey on Outdoors with Larry Wright. You can find out all about it all. Outdoors with Larry 